All right, so uh, this is something that I've been doing for about a year now. It's kind of getting into, well, things related to film. And so this kind of, this kind of relates to my interest in things analog in general or analog technologies. And that includes vinyl records, radio, like shortwave, AM, FM radio. And that kind of juxtaposes my other interests in computers and computing because I, I still do like uh, hobbyist electronic type stuff and programming and my career is based around programming. But I, I like learning about these older technologies, including uh, one thing I've kind of had interest in for a while, but I've never acted on it until last year, and that is uh, film. And I have not really had, and I've kind of, and the more I get into it, the more I appreciate it, and wish I would have appreciated it more when I was a bit younger, when uh, stuff like movies were still shown on film. Especially back in, like, 2014, when they, when they, everything switched to digital. But, so, uh, the purpose of this video is just going to show off some of the film I've been collecting, or specifically movie film, and the different sizes and varieties of it, because I find that super cool. So these first two films you see right here are Regular 8 and Super 8. So it's regular, it's kind of hard to tell, but so, or you can't really tell at all, but this is a reel from a Popeye episode, or a shortened version of an episode. I've had, I have, and like I said, it is on regular 8, and then right, it is on regular 8, and then right next to it is Super 8. And the biggest difference is, or the way you can tell is that the regular 8 has the sprocket holes right in between the uh, frames and like I said it's hard to see in the camera that's kind of overexposed but there are, are sprocket holes right here and they are right here just to the side of the frames in between each frame and you'll notice we can compare these two uh, eight millimeter films directly you can tell that the frame of the regular eight is smaller than the super eight but otherwise the width of the film from edge to edge is still eight millimeters. You also know the aspect ratio of the Super 8 is wider. Almost, uh, I guess I almost call it widescreen. I guess, so this is the one I'm not too sure about is I, I assume the regular 8 is standard four by three ratio that you might've seen on old television. And then of course, the defining character, one of the defining characteristics other than the, the wider aspect ratio of Super 8 is the position of the sparkle holes, you'll see that they're actually in the middle of the frame. And they are actually a little bit smaller than regular eight. And this is to help uh, allow for larger frames in that same space. And for comparison, that is a quarter. i give you an idea of scale for eight millimeter film. I'm going to keep that core right there. So the next thing I'm going to show is 16 millimeter. So all these are just kind of upside down. That's just kind of how their these three films are wound on their reels. And this 16 millimeter is actually a trailer for a Mel Brooks movie called Silent Movie. In glorious phonic sound, as advertised by the movie. But of course, as as the name suggests, it is 16 millimeters wide, whereas Super 8 is 8 millimeters wide, so twice the uh, the frame width. Like regular 8 millimeter, the sprocket holes here are in between each frame. Of course, the frame's bigger, and unlike unlike eight millimeter at all, you have a soundtrack. And now, some uh, Super Eight movies uh, actually, I'll get to the thing. Because the soundtrack uh, it looks like stereo, but it's actually mono each track, 
each one of these two tracks is um, a duplicate of each other, so they're exactly the same. And that's one way to show, uh, or one way to represent sound. And so this overall is called a, a variable area soundtrack. And this is one way to do it, is to have these two tracks. One would be just to have one, one bigger track. Another way would be to have the, uh, the, it's hard to see if the cameras might be, but they look, they look like little sound waves. And another way to have it is just have your sound waves uh, on one side of the track. Another another version of uh, this would be variable uh, density. I think I said variable. Area. This is variable variable area. Uh, variable density would be varying as it suggested. Instead of this uh, audio wave like track, a variable density would be uh, a variance in how much light is shining through the soundtrack. Both but both achieve the same thing. And that is to uh, create a constant changing, uh, constant change in brightness. Like constant change in brightness is what produces uh, our sound because there's a little, there's a light bulb that shines through that, and a light sensor on the other side of the bulb or the lips of the film that catches the changes in light that this film is causing, and then that gets turned into a uh, let, like, electronic uh, pulses of electricity, and that gets turned into the sound. We're reproducing the sound. Now, getting back to what I was about to say earlier, uh, some 16 millimeter film, including uh, newer 16 millimeter productions, will opt for Super 16. And like Super 8, it's just a bigger frame. And whereas in with Super 16, they get rid of the soundtrack completely, and they use that space to, to shoot more of a frame, save more of a widescreen frame, and effectively just a a bigger area to capture a picture. And I believe um, The Walking Dead shot every season except for the last season on 16 millimeter film, and it was probably Super 16, especially with. Uh, with modern digital production or post-production, you want to be recording the sound onto the film, especially because uh, you wouldn't be showing it. You wouldn't. You wouldn't need to store it that way. You wouldn't. You would not need to show it directly off the film with a telecine to air. And so that should that would otherwise should be wasted space. It's not being used by soundtracks, so they'd probably use a Super 16 to capture more of that. Uh, more picture for higher picture quality. So that's kind of that's kind of that's kind of neat thing about uh, or neat little uh, thing about uh, Walking Dead is that they they use sixteen millimeter for most of the series production. Moving on is thirty five millimeter film. So for right here, I have a trailer for Shrek 2. I can pull up down to show that. And of course, so the this is 35 millimeter film. Same width of film that you would put into a 35 millimeter still camera. And my quarter still for scale. Except the pictures in a still camera would be parallel with the length of the film, whereas a motion picture is it is horizontal to the the length of the film. And what's interesting is you'll see a better example here in a moment, but the frame size of the film, or the frame ratio, the, the yeah the ratio of height the width of the frame has not changed since 1930 when they introduced um, the Academy format or the Academy standard, which is a ratio of 1.375 to, to 1, very close to the, the 4 by 3 standard you might see on, on older television, or old televisions, old TV shows. And since the creation of the standard 1930, motion picture has 
used it all the way up until even today. So for the few movies today that are still shot on movie film and even printed and projected on movie film, it still uses that same standard. And so you can see what Shrek 2 here is doing is what uh, to achieve a widescreen look or widescreen format is that they map the film with these black bars. Because uh, older films going back before 1950, they would uh, use, it would just be that, that standard square format. And of course, the television movies had to adapt and optimize and give people a way to give people a reason to come back to the theater. And so they started doing widescreen movies. And so this is one solution to that. Uh, to offer widescreen was just to mat the frame. Of course, the major downside to that is you have a smaller movie frame. And you get less detail out of it. And so this camera not let me not so this camera will not let me focus any further than it already is uh, zoomed in. But right here on the very edge of the film, so that's the sprocket holes. The edge comes out to right about here. And on the other side of the sprocket holes over here is a, another kind of soundtrack. Now similar to the 16 millimeter film, you have this, the 16 millimeter like I said earlier has this mono soundtrack. But on 35 millimeter you have stereo and you can kind of see it right here. These are two different analog stereo tracks and I think this was called Dolby stereo. Dolby was the one that introduced that in the 70s, I think, 60s, 70s. And that was what was standard uh, used in theaters to provide stereo sound. Before that, it would have been mono, even on 35 millimeter film. And then in the late 80s, we have a couple new formats. So right here in between the sprocket holes is what looks like a QR code. And that would be a so each one comes right after the, the next, or the, the previous. And those QR, QR code looking uh, boxes contain data for digital sound. And then a scanner would read that, decode it, provide the digital sound out to the speaker system, do, and it provided like Dolby surround sound. And so again, that was something that Dolby provided. And they even provided other than the sound, they'll even embed updates for their system firmwares into that. So when the Dolby scanner system would read that, it would also get the, in addition to the sound, it would also get various updates to the system. And it's still the same Dolby system that's used even with modern digital movies. And this, so whenever they do print one of these out, it's, still, it's just the same system. Now over here, in a bit of a turquoise color, is, a, is Sony's uh solution to digital sound and it's also redundant on the other edge of the film too however that never really took off some theaters used it some didn't i think the major disadvantage to using the sony digital sound was the fact that it would always get damaged because it was right on the edge of the film and so the film would get feathered and it would uh become unusable and then right next to the stereo sound are the little dots, kind of looks like Morse code. Those are time codes. That was another way of producing sound is these time codes would really let you allow you to sync up to a DVD or a CD that would have your movie's audio. And then that would just keep everything in check or keep everything synced up with uh, the movie. And then I have another trailer right next to it. I get it. So really, it's another 35 millimeter trailer. The major difference you might notice is the the soundtrack here is no longer black; it's turquoise. I think that was to allow for a better. I think that's that was a decision that was made in the 90s. I think. Or early 2000s and that was to make it 
that allowed him to use a, 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 la a red laser or something like that to read the analog sound, and that allowed for a higher fidelity sound. But one thing it's kind of hard to see here, but you'll see if I move the film up. You'll notice the, of course, the first thing you'll notice is that this movie uses up the entirety of the frame. And this, this is another trailer, uh, movie trailer. This one is for one of the Die Hard movies. And it uses the entire frame, the entire 4x3 frame. And so how they achieve widescreen with this is you'll notice that the, the frame looks a little bit squeezed uh, horizontally. It's just something that's known as scope. And so essentially when they would film the movie, they have a special lens or a, it's called an anamorphic lens that would squeeze the image onto the frame horizontally. And then the movie theaters would have a, a lens that or effectively the same lens, but backwards to unsqueeze or stretch the image back out to create a widescreen image. And of course the advantage with this over the, the matted image was that you could use the entirety of the frame to get more information in the frame or get more information out of you're using the entire frame so there's more resolution there's more picture image information that you're getting out of it i'm not sure why some movies use the matte version over the uh, over the scoped version it could just be what hardware you have on hand do that and i think with the cgi movies through the 2000s, it was probably maybe a technology limitation to print the movie out flat. And that's what they call the uh, the mad version is flat. And maybe there's a technological limitation to print the DCJ movie onto the film uh, flat versus um, scoped. Now we're going to skip a format here because I do not have it, but... I have the next thing up from it. <clears throat> and that is actually to zoom out because it doesn't fit. And I'm going to wait for the um, the camera to focus, maybe. Want to focus, camera? I'm waiting for the camera here to focus. I can't really control the the focus on it, but you'll see that it is a frame from the movie Interstellar. And so what's special about this is this is an IMAX frame. And it is 70 millimeters wide. So what we can tell is the perforations go across it horizontally, much like in your still film cameras. Instead of being vertical like this. And so I was saying, and so uh, and so doing that also now a widescreen image horizontally, which gives them a bigger picture than if it were vertically. And I think currently the, the IMAX film standard, 1570, because it's 70 millimeters wide and the frame is 15 perforations across, is the highest quality standard out of digital or analog formats. Uh, no digital projectors or sensor is capable. So no digital, so no digital movie sensor is quite capable of recording in this format and no uh, projector is quite capable of projecting this format which is what makes it quite special in the, the high resolution of this movie that this film provides and it's a shame that some of the or a lot of the IMAX theaters are slowly uh, converting to digital like our uh, Science Center here has a dome, an IMAX dome theater, and last November they switched from their analog 1570 film projectors to the newer IMAX digital laser projectors, which don't have the same resolution. 
It's a shame that they, they switched from that. It's a shame that I was not able to really appreciate that, that format. Especially uh, when you go into the, the Science Center, you could see the projection booth behind glass and watch the projectionist thread the film through the projector. Or if the movies are playing, you'd see the film just kind of going through that. It was always kind of neat to watch. And our quarter for scale. And we'll zoom out here in a second to show the scale. But yeah, so the IMAX film actually does not have a soundtrack on it. Instead, the IMAX was sent to a... I think early IMAX had magnetic tape that they would sync to. And newer IMAX would have a... Um, would sync to the digital audio on a CD. Now, in between these formats, which I do not have, would have been a no other 70 millimeter format where the picture would have run horizontal to the length of the film, like the rest of these. And uh, I do not have one of those to show you, but that would have been movies like. Ben Hur, or maybe even the Once of Arabia. I don't know if that there was, but Ben Hur would have been a movie that was shown in Super Panda Vision seventy, along with um, I think the Hateful Eight. Uh, Quentin Tarantino's Hateful Eight was also uh, filmed and shown in that too, with the same exact lenses, and that would have been five instead of fifteen. Uh, the frame would have been five perforations tall or a third of this uh, uh, length, and just as wide, and that would have provided the, the ultra widescreen look without having to squeeze the image onto the frame or make it scope. So eventually maybe I will get one of those just for, for my collection of film here. And of course if we zoom out here, we'll see Uh, we'll zoom, or we'll focus, excuse me, all the different films. So going back to here to, to regular 8, it's a super 8, 16 millimeter, uh, we're flat, 35, or scoped 35, a quarter for scale, and then this is what our regular 70 millimeter would look like, and then our IMAX 70 millimeter, you get an idea of the, the different frame sizes. That was just something I wanted to share. I think it's cool. And this is all these different analog film formats for movie film. And at least these are all still, these are all still formats that are still produced. Like I said, this is, uh, this right here is a home, this black one right here is a home movie that I shot last year and got developed. Of course, this is regular eight. And it's an old uh, Popeye film. I think you can, probably still get regular eight. I think someone uh, takes the, the, the movie film makes your delay out of it uh, that you can purchase. Of course 16 millimeter still made I ha and still produced still made they still get to make sound film or prints for that. Um, I've shot a couple home movies in that and of course 35 millimeter movie film which is about three or four dozen movies are still shot in that every year uh, occasionally a movie is printed in it for special occasions and shown in a theater that has a film projector and of course the IMAX film I'm pretty sure is still produced I, don't know, I, I, I definitely know it's definitely shot and it's definitely been becoming more popular among uh, directors and producers to, to shoot in IMAX 70 but of course it's still occasionally it's still Printed for projection in because uh, some I theaters still use the uh, the IMAX film. But yeah, that was uh, my little film collection, and I hope you enjoyed that. And yeah.